Hey there. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about something that happened this morning. Um, if you've been around here for a little while, you know that I've had two neck surgeries in the last year and a half. One of the um, risks or side effects, I guess, of having um, the first surgery that I had is kind of a narrowing in your throat. And so um, I'm really conscientious about the size of bites I take. Um, I drink a lot of fluids while I'm eating um, just to make sure that I don't choke. But choking is something that happens often. And I really haven't choked badly until the last month. Um, the more active I am, the more I choke. So um, every day our kids rest in the afternoon and most days I'm able to lie down and kind of rest all my neck and shoulder muscles um, and that helps a ton but um, here in the last month or so we went to the beach and I did not lay down at all um, during the day and then on the weekends we go to the lake um, or we're just outside a lot trying to keep the kids busy um, while also still maintaining our isolation as much as possible and so um, the swelling in my throat is just, it's a lot. Um, I choked really badly at the beach um, and Hannah and our nanny Kelly were there um, and I was able to get through it, but Kelly really thought that she was gonna have to intervene. Um, and when I choke, um, I, my throat, um, when I choke, I cough for a really long time. Um, I, I coughed that time for 30 minutes, um, but then my voice is so, so weak, um, and my throat will hurt for, for days. Um, so I say all of that to tell you that um, it's kind of been on my radar that um, I probably need to talk to my neurosurgeon about this. Um, but this morning, I was home alone with my kids, and I was eating bacon, sitting on a recliner, and um, I choked. And Mike was watching his show, and by the grace of God, Abe turned around and looked at me, and he said, Mommy, are you okay? And I, I was not breathing at all. I could get no air um, at all. And um, I didn't answer him, couldn't. Uh, and I, I knew that if in the next minute I could not get air, that I was going to pass out. And so I had about a minute to figure out what I was going to do before that happened. Um, and so I had my phone in my hand and I dialed 911. Um, and I, I looked at Abe um, so that he knew that I wasn't okay. And he came over to me and started screaming, Mom, are you okay? Um, and I leaned over in the chair as far as I could. Phone because they're Hunter's brother, and if anything, our kids have to know how to call 911 and ask for help. I knew that if he saw 911, he would know that he needed to call and ask for help. And, and just prayed, and just said, God, I need your help. I really need your help. Don't let my kids see this happen. Don't let them watch me choke to death. And I was getting ready to hand Abe the- scared Abe to death. Um, but I got the tiny, tiniest bit of air um, and was able to cough once and then I was able to take another gasp of air um, and I knew that if I could keep doing that I was gonna be okay. I don't know how long I sat there for but um, it felt like forever and I was able to take the absolute tiniest gasp of air um, and it was loud and it it's risk of choking if whatever was lodged in my throat was to go back um, where it had been. Um, but the reason I tell you guys this, um, and I, I, I know that Jesus interceded, I know that he, he made me cough. It probably took 10 minutes for me to be able to cough fully. Um, and I was ready to call myself um, for oxygen. That's how scared I was that, um, that I was still at I'm telling you all of this um, to tell you that if your children, I think any child over the age of three, to be honest with you, um, if they don't know how to call 911 and how to do it without being scared, 
to, if they don't know that 911 is there to, to help you in any situation, even for the smallest little thing that they think they might need help with or you might need help with, if they don't know their address, if they don't know your phone number, um, that is can teach them those things now and you never ever know when they might need to use them. Um, and the reality of it was so, so real and scary today. I've obviously already emailed my neurosurgeon um, the best way you could be spending your time with them right now. And the thing is, we are spending so much more time together lately. Um, obviously, we hope and pray that something like this never happens. They never have to call 911. Um, but you, you, after the surgery that I had, it seems like there's this procedure where um, they can gradually stretch out uh, the, the throat, the esophagus. Um, and we might be at that point. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from him, but this was, um, too close and, um, and scary. So I wanted to just put it out there for you guys as a reminder to make sure, um, I'm super, super thankful, um, today for, um, Jesus and his protection. Um, and thought that I would just put out that reminder for you guys too. That if you are ever in a position like that, especially with all of this time that we're spending with our kids and alone with our kids for many of us, um, that they know that basic skill um, or even out in public, wherever they might be. So 